as a mom of three i've learned a few things over the years like i have been a stay-at-home mom since day one and it has been seven years like my oldest is seven i have a five-year-old and a two-year-old as well and i have learned so much about them <laughs> Because for one, I'm always at home with them. Two, I really dedicate individual time to get to know them through homeschooling and like making intentional time to take them out with me, to allow them to cook with me, to allow them to read with me, to do things that they're interested in and it's so important. So I'm going to be starting a little series where I share some of the things I've learned over the years as being a stay at home mom for seven years now and just share my biggest gems some things that has helped me as a mom you know you know, just be successful at it you know feel like i'm doing a great job there are a lot of parenting books out there there are a lot of advice that you can get from your elders your mothers your grandmothers your friends you know early childhood education experts on how to parent and things of that nature i'm not coming to you as an expert right but i do do my research i'm coming to you as a mom who has experience in both classrooms as well as being a stay-at-home mom, homeschooling mom, as well as just being around a whole lot of children in general. My overall experience is, you know, being the oldest child and, you know, sometimes feeling like, you know, I could use a little more attention even though I picked up on things and, you know, got good grades. I feel like, you know, sometimes we do seem, seem to forget about the children who are more independent. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing about the importance of spending one-on-one -on -one time with each of your children. And um, while it seems like something small, I can definitely say like being a stay-at-home mom, especially with young children, it's like you just don't get any time to yourself, right? Um, the children are always at each other's neck, you know. I want to do this. This is mine. I want to sit here. I want to do that. But it's really important to be intentional about giving each of them one-on-one -on -one time. For one, I want to get to know you. Not you when you're around your sister. Not when you when you're around your brother. But you as a person. Like, I really am genuinely interested in knowing that you, you know, I want to help you blossom. I want to work on our special bond. So... I've had these conversations with my husband before about the importance of like, hey, I really would like to do, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with the kids, you know, and we just talked about some different ways that we can do that, right? Whether we do store runs, you know, with just one of them, right? Or we take them out for lunch or we take them when we go get gas, like just finding those small ones of time when we have to run errands where the other ones are sleeping or whatever the case may be. And it's like, hey, let me take you know this child because you know I just feel like we need some time like I need to get to know them you know I, I want to get to know their personality um especially when you have you make you make the transition from one child to two children from two to three it's like every time a new one is added to your family things get a little bit more hectic you know your time is really like divided up between all of what's going on you want to make time for yourself you have to make time for your spouse you have to make time for homeschool you have to make time to cook you have to make time to do this and that, and that. you have to make time for everything but the bond that you form with your children is so so important and this will um help with their behavior like there are so many benefits i just want to share like a few easy ways that you could spend this one-on-one -on -one time with your children that you don't even have to think about right so the first one i mentioned already this running errands so just the other day i took my son first because he was the first one up i took him to the store with me right later on that day my two of my babies were napping so my husband took my oldest daughter out to the store with him and so later on that day i was like okay these two have had their one-on-one -on -one time with, with with me or my husband so i took my youngest daughter who's five out to the grocery store with me later that night because i just wanted them all to have some time to like ask some questions and you know just see i just really want to see what they see and just i'm really interested in what they're thinking about and stuff like that anything that's bothering them or whatever the case may be that they probably don't want to say in front of everybody else like that's just one way to do it the second way that you can spend time with your children um just one-on-one -on -one time is at night time like say for instance you have an older child like last night um me and my seven year old we had game night because my five year old and my two year old were sleeping and so we had game night um we played the black wall street um board game which is really fun by the way we talked about like, business we went over a little history because on the board game they have things like 
Madam C.J. Walker, they had things like Booker T. Washington schools and just the different names of schools and so I went over the history with her and we just talked about different things and it was really, really fun. The third way you can spend one-on-one -on -one time with your children is through a book, reading them a book, right? Or having them read you a book. This is very, very beneficial, especially with toddlers because they just always want you to read the same old thing. Um, especially my son. I feel like the younger they are, the more one-on-one -on -one time they get. But it's really important that you include the older ones as well. So, my son usually wakes up when I do. Like, when I move, when I move, he's usually awake. And he wants to eat. And he wants to read a book. And he wants to play a game. And he wants to do all of this. But reading books is really very beneficial. Um, this is something I also did last night with my seven-year-old. Just had her read to me. And she was like, you know, are you going to be listening? So it's very important to be intentional, you know, phones away, give them your undivided attention so that y'all can really, really, you know, form that bond and do a parent, you know, parent and child thing, like really build a relationship. The fourth way that you can spend one-on-one -on -one time with your child is by cooking together. This could be them helping you prep things. This could be you, be them mixing things while you're baking. This could be them... You know, just doing anything in the kitchen with you. You assisting them. Um, it could even be them picking out the dish or the meal that they want to make and you just help them in the kitchen. It also depends on the age, but I feel like being in the kitchen is definitely a good way to bond. Um, especially with moms and daughters, right? I feel like me teaching my girls all that I know about baking is so special. Um, I'm, I'm For one, I'm setting the foundation, right? I'm teaching them the things that they would need to know once they get older, you know, and have their own families so they can do the same thing with their children. Um, but just the kitchen is a good way. You know, everybody loves a good meal. <laughs> and what better way to um, really get your children to eat and healthy and things like that than to include them. The fifth way to have one-on-one -on -one time with your children is to get outside. Like, it's nothing like doing a little foot race. You could, you know, ride a bike with them. You could just sit outside and watch the birds or look at the trees or just anything. Like, fresh air and sun always does it for me. So, it really doesn't take a whole lot, you know, to just enjoy each other's company. But being outside, you can go to the park, you can go for a walk, you can run, you know, play with leaves, make crap, um you know do little crafts and things like that like you cannot go wrong with that i feel like i'm on number six but i could be wrong so the next thing i'm gonna say is to do a craft together my girls are very very crafty like they love to do arts and crafts they love to draw they love to build things they love to take cardboard and make it into other things and so just i guess the biggest thing the common denominator in all of these things is making sure you're available that you are not you are giving them your undivided attention, that you are willing to let them do things their way, right? Um, you are really, you know, leaning into their interests, you know, letting them lead, you know, you're building their confidence, you are building their self-esteem, you are giving them their support, and you are letting them know that, hey, I'm here for you, you know, you can do this. Like, it's so many things that can go into one-on-one -on -one time. You can really build your child up if they are lacking in certain areas. And then the last one I have, I think it's pretty simple, and that is watch a movie with them. Let them pick their favorite movie, or you pick a movie. You know, it has to be age appropriate, right? It varies by age. But um, those are really a few ways that I feel like you could do one-on-one -on -one time with your children. I feel like, you know, sometimes things get hectic, you know, and you just want to have a break from your children. But once you get that break, you know, make sure you take small pockets of time. It could be early in the morning. Whoever's up, get a little bit of time. It could be during nap time. The older ones get that time. It could be at night time, right? Everybody else is asleep. They're up. They get a little five or ten minutes extra before they go to bed. It could be, you know, it could be any of the thing, right? Somebody in the house doing their work. Somebody else wants to take a walk to the mailbox. Like, it's so many ways to make the time, but it's very, very important. I promise you, if you have seen, like, act, them acting out as far as behavior-wise, if you have seen them, like, acting out at their siblings and things of that nature, it's probably because they just need some time and attention. So, um, hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know what topic you want me to discuss next. You know, as a stay-at-home mom of seven years, as a homeschool mom who is just willing to share her journey on how she feel like she is doing something that has been successful, you know, in parenting thus far. So, hopefully this, hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know if it was in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!